is because ultimately Death Prophet has to go through a team fight first before you go for a push. Now, sometimes teams won't actually contest you for towers, but, uh, you know, nine times out of ten with with the way that the meta is working right now, there's so many mid-game heroes being picked up that they will be fighting you for every single tower you go for. So ultimately, Death Prophet has to fight through a team fight first. You lose the team fight, there's obviously going to be no push coming out after that point in time. So I, I agree with you. I think that laning phase is just not getting quite enough priority. Um, Sventures Gaming have a chance of being able to basically win one lane, draw even on the middle lane, and then lose another. And that, that's at best, I think. Um, and at worst, they could actually horribly, horribly lose this bottom lane. Um, and then middle lane and potentially top to could not go as well as they should. So um, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the laning phase as well. And um, if they do, if they do actually do seem to go, you know, decently well uh the problem is still going to be that they're lacking a mech uh the viper just won't be able to pick up that fast mech which is pretty necessary for death profit pushes i feel and i almost want to say like maybe the bristleback should try and farm up a mech instead and we have the viper going straight in for you know basic upgraded boots ring of akilla and then maybe straight into an agonims at that point in time and just uh skip over the mech due to the fact your laning phase is going to be so poor no, I, th I think that's absolutely right. So, so, so three points. Number one, I completely agree. I think basically, I think as Ventures, you, your mentality has to be that between the Death Prophet, the Bristleback, and the Viper, uh, whoever's having the best laning phase has to really think hard about going for that mech. Because I think both in terms of, of offense, if they do break even in the laning phase and want to make those pushes happen, the mech is very important. And in terms of defense, if they do fall behind and they're getting pushed in on themselves, uh, potentially an engagement here down bottom, this Skyrath may may be dead with chilling touch man yeah. i'm telling you this AA is damage bonus that's just ridiculous yeah i mean skyrath oh may starts out with zero armor i mean you already your yeah. health pool is pretty bad but you have zero armor. That's why Skyrath Mage is, is not a very good defensive hero, is that you're so easily popped like that. I'm not even sure if the Fisher uh, was necessary. They yeah. might have just been able to kill the, the poor Skyrath Mage or just plain right clicks. So obviously a very bad start nice. for SVG as they give up first blood within the first minute. Yeah, that, that chilling touch in that situation is just devastating. Skyrath actually has one of the worst starting armors in the game. Uh, a little little fun factoid is that uh, armor, although the displayed value is always a whole number, uh, it actually does go out to a couple of decimal places, and you can see that if you if you pay attention to the actual percentage of physical damage resistance when you mouse over it. Wisp actually has a very slightly negative starting armor value. Uh, but uh, Skyrath Mage is, is one of the worst next to Wisp, and you can see that 4% physical damage resistance. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. They're ne they're not gonna move their uh, lich here to the bottom <laughs> lane, which yeah. um, mm -hmm. I this is just I guess my my play style. But for me, I I don't want to barely lose all of my lanes. I want to lose one lane really badly and win. Oh, the viper's dead. Yeah, he's gonna get fissured up with a right click. They easily have enough damage to be able to take him down, and there's gonna be no kill in return. The Lich can't really do anything in these situations. The level one hero, he's very, very poor. Uh, he, he has obviously nothing to add whatsoever except right click damage. So uh, another kill goes the way of Titan, and this is what I was afraid of. If they committed to the Lich now being in the defensive try lane, they're still going to lose this lane, but now you have an additional hero who's going to be losing it with you and the top lane won't be going nearly as well for the bristleback who could have had a great matchup with the lich babysitting him up against the the centaur he could have actually gone for a very offensive build and gone for a one two one build which would allow you to have a lot of kill potential at level three between the double slows of viscous goo and uh and the lich frost blast but now i uh, the the bristleback may actually lose his lane yeah, I, this may be another. This should be another kill. In fact, on the sky right down here, and and this is. We've, it feels like we've had this conversation before just because of the nature of the games that we've been casting together recently. Uh, you know, when you're a team like Sventures and, and you are gigantic underdogs in paper in this matchup and you know it, uh, it, some of your laning decisions do tend to, tend to be built around the idea that, look, we just wanna we wanna go into the game and have a chance of doing something at the ten minute mark, and it, it just feels like here, yeah, they're not gonna have a chance anyway. The the lich uh, and, and and the lich moving down here made absolutely no difference. I, I just I don't know I don't know what the answer is here. I think um, if you don't move the lich down here, I think you start having to abandon the lane entirely. But I don't know that it's made a difference anyway.
Yeah, the Lich is really just adding more, uh, more, more fuel for the flames. Really, is what it comes down to. He's just <laughs> being an additional kill. Uh, he almost, he could have actually gotten the Shadow Shaman kill there, but he actually went for the right click rather than the Frost Blast. Yeah. It looks like, and because of that. Shadow Shaman was able to get out of range. Oh, nice. Bristleback got a kill up against the Centaur. I saw that oh, matchup that's, going back. Yeah, that's forward, big. But, um, so he does still win his lane, despite the fact he doesn't have the presence of Lich here. And him picking up level 6 before the Centaur can um, it definitely makes a big difference. Bristleback's damage is mainly coming from that ward path nowadays, um, not necessarily on the Bristleback stacks, as the Quills are very, very strong, don't mean wrong, but I think your right clicks are also doing even more damage, especially once you hit, like, level 8, and you have that extra extra proc of Warpath when you start using your Nasal Goo. Yeah, and I, I think just even that solo kill up there looks like it's bought uh, Sventure's bottom lane here. Just a little bit of, of breathing room. You know, any 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 time that they can get a couple of creep waves uncontested, they can get a pull off. I, that's just so big for them right now, just in terms of, of triage, in terms of stopping the bleeding. Mm -hmm. I like this. The Death Prophet is taking advantage of the fact that this is uh, just a farming battle back and forth in the middle lane. So you're going to get some additional farm of the Death Prophet by pulling. Um, he's going to be stacking up that hard camp, is, is what I mean to say. So that will be some extra farm for him to have later on into the game. Um, unfortunately, the problem is still going to be Centaur is going to be level 6 soon. And this tri lane will just trample will actually quite literally stampede over this defensive tri lane once again. They will probably pick up at least two kills uh, the moment that Centaur picks up his level six. So, yeah. I, I, and they don't really have rotating heroes either. That's the problem. Bristleback well, isn't really a rotating hero. He's a farming But you have to be. It, right. it, this, that's the thing. I mean, you can say they don't have rotating heroes, but, but right now, I mean, that has to be in your mentality. You have to be thinking as a Death Prophet and a Bristleback, you know what, you can say what you want about our heroes, but given the game situations, we have to be able to fight. And this is actually why I just hate, hate, hate this decision right here by the Death Prophet not to, not to skill the exorcism before level 6. You've got a TP scroll. You're recognizing that your bottom lane is just being run over is going to get, again, pardon the pun, stampeded over even more heavily uh, uh, potentially in the next couple of minutes. You got to have that exorcism and be, and just be ready to fight. Level 1 exorcism certainly is not the best pushing skill. It's not the best damage skill, period, but it's better than nothing. And, uh, and right now, she could be TPing down here, popping exorcism, and at least responding in some way. Viper goes down rather easily, and that's just one simple pick off. No center ultimate was used there. I thought they were going to try and use it to go in for additional kill, but it looks like Ohio wants to try and set up a kill on the middle lane, but this is actually perfect timing as the Death Prophet uh, will come back and throw Crypt Swarm, but he was actually farming up the jungle, meaning he was rather safe from this attempted gank by Ohio. It's going to come in now, though, yeah, and Yellow could not move back fast enough. He's going to get run over, and uh, that means there's going to kill these there and bottom lane as well, where the Viper's going to go down. KYXY will actually feed away his life in response, though, so that's actually the best trade they could get at this point in time. The additional dive, trying to go in for the kill on the Skywrath Mage. Extinct is going to commit to this one. He's going to lose his life. Net now fighting up against two. Wow, they actually nice. get down. A two for three exchange there for Spencer's Gaming after they had totally gotten crushed in this lane. Yeah, Ohio Centaur should experience. actually just be able to walk up and clean this up if he chooses to do so. But that that was a very, very nice play uh, by the two supports of Sventures to salvage something out of that, to stand and fight, sort of sort of stick and move there, float like a butterfly, if you will, uh, and get the return kills there. I still, I, I gotta go back, I hate what this Death Prophet is doing. She has what, in my opinion, is the very worst skill build on Death Prophet. You know, I, I understand what you said about the farming mentality and I think that makes some sense. You know, an early Yule Scepter, uh, even getting your phase boots up here nice. for positioning is really important for her. But, uh, you know, your your lanes are getting crushed. I mean, you, you're losing a 3v3 matchup down bot. You have to be ready to respond. I just, I don't like at all what she's doing. Putting off the exorcism until level 9, in fact. And now TA can dive her with impunity, really. Yeah, this uh, Templar Assassin, as soon as you get the traps up, becomes much bigger threat to Death Prophet than you were before. So she, I, I like the fact that she's sitting back and, and doing the whole stacking and everything else, but I, I do agree that at the very least, even if you want to try and go for more of the farming build, you should at least have a teleport, because oftentimes just having a teleport, you can see the opportunities to farm more because you're getting hero kills rather than CS. Middle lane's going to go down as Death Prophet gets stampeded, and uh, 
from the three heroes up net. Well, net's actually going to fall as uh, Lich commits a full-on oh. ultimate to get this uh, kill. Oh, oh, no, he's not going to get it. Charges. Best item in the game, folks. Oh, dear. Top lane. Yeah, it's still KYXY versus the Bristleback in 1v1. But, yeah, Ned just barely able to get out of there. That was a big mistake there from the Lich once again. Yeah, and I'm gonna go, actually going to go ahead and call this mistake number two. Um, I, I don't mind Vanguard on Bristleback, actually. I mean, Vanguard obviously is everybody's favorite redheaded stepchild whipping boy as an item. Uh, but I don't mind it on Bristleback. I mind it here, though. I think you got to go on Mac. KYXY is going to be taken down at the same time the bottom lane did have a Viper who went down. So at least it's a trade in some regard. And, uh, that actually puts Skywrath Mage uh, a bit higher experience. He's already had his level 6, so that's that's actually pretty decent for them. I was concerned that these supports were going to be super underleveled, but between having a Lich in general, but also the fact, well, the dive in middle lane, Yamate is committing here to the kill off the Death Prophet, but he's going to be uh, pushed back out as the Lich and the Death Prophet return back. They're going to continue to try and go for the kill here. The next equip swarm goes out, but they don't have enough to be able to finish off Yamate. As Refraction comes back up, he's going to be fine. I actually really like the way that Sventure's supports have played in the last couple of minutes. I mean, yeah, they, they've they've been in a very, very difficult situation, and they've done a very good job having a presence on the map that's often so hard to do. Another Stampede goes out, and if they just get a little bit of damage onto this Death Prophet, she will shatter there. KY oh, actually committing the Echo slam. slam, but it's not going to be right, enough. He's going to be forced he's back once game. again. Slow's going to hit him from the Skywrath Mage. Don't think they'll be able to get that kill. He's already out, though. Uh, a plus to the Bristleback, though. Committing to taking the top Tier 1 tower. I think that was something that a lot of Bristlebacks um, just aren't being picked up enough for, but also when I see the Bristleback playing, they don't really start targeting the tower early on, but a tower taken by nine minutes in is very good timing for a Bristle. One thing he's missing, though, no levels of uh, Nasal Goo, even though he's on a 1v1 matchup. If you're against a defensive tri-lane, I can understand if you go totally 0-4-4, but at this point, you should have a should least one. should get a kill on the Centaur down here. This is a very, very nice thing. Oh, he's oh, able to just no, just short away. on the damage. I thought they were going to have enough damage to kill him off, but yeah, Centaur with that uh, with that 3.8 per level strength gain, uh, that's, he's a very, very tanky hero. Oh, this is too late to be but popping wait, the exit. Or is it? He actually gets the kill. Oh, man. I thought Death Prophet was going to just die before the exorcism was able to do much, but uh, it was is is that, uh, playing against a TA as a Death Prophet, you have to have that exorcism as dive protection for you. It at least makes her think twice about diving in, and you may actually get a nice return kill there. I, I really do, and again, guys, I can see the Twitch chat now, like, people are going to erupt uh, in, in about a couple of seconds when the Earthshaker mix it, uh, misses his Echo Slam mid there. I don't mind Titan I playing hyper-aggressively here, trying to leverage the advantage that they had. I think they're sending four heroes Radiant down to take the spot tower, and that's great, but I actually think Sventures is playing very nicely to just kind of keep themselves in this game. This, this game could be over right now. Yeah, easily. It, it easily could, but they're actually making some, some ways back into it. Tier 1 tower is going to go down the bottom lane, but remember that's still offset by the fact that Bristleback was able to take that top tower so early on, so it's not even a lead necessarily for Titan that they claim with that tower kill. Uh, they're going to drop back down and gold lead a bit more, but they're still only keeping about a 500 to 1,000 gold lead at any point in time. And Sventures, especially after that kill solo on the Templar Assassin in the mid lane, uh, is actually now ahead and experienced. Drum pickup from the Templar Assassin, but we're going to see SVG running into Titan here. The ward's being committed. No ward trap successful. Two man Ancient Apparition. Just one, actually, as it hits the Bristleback. Uh, ultimate's being committed on both sides there. SF SVG just got to get out of here, I think. Skywrath Mage going to be gone on by Yamate, who grabbed the Haste root, and that is going to be the only kill, I think, for Titan. SVG so got to be happy with that exchange, maybe even more. Centaur uh, coming I in. He doesn't have his ultimate, but an excellent vision block is going to keep Bristleback locked in the side. He's going to be taken down while well, the Templar Assassin commits to the Death Prophet, and now the Lich kill as well. Chain Frost goes out, but it's not going to be enough to get any kills here. And uh, a triple kill, what should have been just a very simple uh, exactly. fire of skills back and forth. The Haste root made all the difference in the world. Uh, you know what? To me, it wasn't even the hate It was the fact that uh, SPG just had the wrong mentality there. I mean, you, you, look, they've been playing very nicely for the last couple of minutes in terms of their decision making and their support positioning to give themselves a chance. Uh, you can't do that. You've got to keep in your head. You are still behind in the game. Titan just came over that ramp, that, uh, that upper radiant forest ramp there. They dropped the Fisher in the wards. They've committed their abilities back off. There's nothing that says that you have to contest that fight if you're Sventures. You know that you're down in the game. 
And that's kind of the problem is that, you know, when you when you lose the laning phase like like they did, you're kind of playing with fire. You know, they had to play so well just to kind of just to kind of not get snowballed on. You make one bad decision there, committing to a fight in a bad position, and all of a sudden uh, the advantage that Titan has has. I mean, just look at the gold graph, right? All of a sudden, after that one bad engagement, the advantage that Titan has uh, accumulated in this game is just is just huge. After Spencer's had almost clawed their way back. Mm -hmm. And now SVG are just going to have to spend some time farming at this point because uh, while the mech is going to be picked up soon from the Death Prophet, they certainly don't have enough power to be able to take down any of those additional Tier 1 towers. I think they just got to sit back and go for more farming. Uh, it's, this can't actually be. Uh, it almost looks like Viper is going to be going for a Vanguard of his own. But... Uh, but I, 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 that can't possibly happen, right? <laughs> like, I have no comment. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll see how it works. We do have a smoke game coming in. KYXY net. Ancient Apparition Ultimate will still land thanks to that Fissure. And with that extra bit of damage from KYXY's Enchant Totem, uh, almost enough to finish him off. Centaur Ultimate goes up, and that's because top lane, they're being threatened. Ohio slowed down enough. Now that it's Centaur nice. Ultimate's down, they will be able to claim that kill. So that is a big pickup for them. Uh, at the same time, Death Prophet is about to be sandwiched. Exorcism's going to go off, tries to fight KYX. A beautiful silence. Double damage Yamate, though, is going to be a serious threat. KYXY will be taken down. I think that's the best this Death Prophet could hope for as uh, double damage Yamate. And now, whoa, Lich, you got to get out of here. He's going to be gone on, actually. The trap actually misses still. Enough right click damage is going to be enough. Uh, the two in the river. You have both the Bristleback and the Skyrath Mage trying to chase down Extinct. They do get the go on him, but they're going to end up losing some lives in exchange for it. Net, they're going to start targeting him on Bristleback, but this is going to be a bit of an exchange. Skyrath Mage has already gone down, and Bristleback may fall as well. Fortunately, his pass is doing a lot of work. Nice little juke around in order to try and make sure that Yamate can't hit him in the face as he teleports away. Nicely played. Yeah, I really liked it. The only thing that I would say here, first of all, I, I mean, there's a reason I didn't comment. I didn't comment on the Vit booster for the Viper. That's just that's awful. Uh, as as SVG, I think that they're doing the right thing again here. The only problem I've got is you've got to be very careful. You've got the heroes to fight in these running engagements, okay? So you've got the Viper, you've got the Bristleback, you've got the Death Prophet. All of them excel in doing damage over time. They're very, very good in these sort of long, drawn-out, not necessarily 5v5 engagements. The problem is that the problem with that is that those kinds of engagements are very hard to fight. They're going to pick up a pretty easy Roshan here on the Dire side on Titan. Uh, those engagements are very, very hard to fight when you're behind because the other side is going to have mobility items up like the Blink Dagger on the Earthshaker, and it's very, very hard to prevent them from focusing on one of those heroes. You look at that network, see how far ahead. I mean, it's actually like the Bristleback and Death Prophet are still keeping up a good uh, good GPM, but the uh, this Templar Assassin is so far ahead. Now the Centaur is going to look for initiation. Actually, with quite heavily there with Ohio running around like a chicken with his head cut off. They're still going to try and target the Centaur Warrunner of all heroes, and they will be able to get him, but at such a cost here, Bristleback's going to fall, and now now some additional kills on the way. Templar Trap is going to slow down the Viper. They will get in range for a Hex. Exorcism goes out. And they might be able to get a return kill on some of the supports at the very best, but not with KYXY focusing down the Death Prophet. And there goes a complete team wipe, all in exchange for a Centaur War Runner as Titan finds the better initiation 17 minutes in. Yeah, and this to me plays back into what you were saying about the Death Prophet's mentality in the mid lane. Is it, a lot of people they think to themselves, okay, TA can just be this this Radiance just devastating snowball hero. I want to keep her from snowballing. And kind of what we were saying earlier is that the Death Prophet said, all right, I know I have a more or less static tri v tri matchup bottom, so I'm nice. just going to try and out farm the TA. Well played, well played by yeah, the, uh, nice block. By KYXY with that Earthshaker teleport in. They yep. will be able to get that kill as uh, he does take out. Yamate is pretty far forward. Here he does have an Aegis, though, so at the very best, the SVG can hope to be able to pop the Aegis and back themselves away. At the very worst, though, this could be your turnaround kill. Net goes, goes for the Hex, teleports nice himself away. Fine, yeah. Nice disengage. Now, but uh, to finish the point just briefly, what I was going to say is that your mentality against a TA like this, it, it's not enough to outfarm her to keep her from snowballing because you have supports that are down there in that tri lane getting crushed. Y you've got to worry about contributing something to the team fight because the TA doesn't necessarily snowball from farm. She snowballs from getting these ultra kills on the super squishy supports. There's the Viper. They might be able to get a kill on her now, but she pops a haste and she's fine.
Yeah, the uh, Centaur ult going sorry, out. Uh, Lich additional yeah. slow. Aegis is going to go down soon here. It looks like Yamane wants to commit uh, and die here and have the rest of his team try and follow up. But the rest of the team is not coming forward. They're actually just going to leave Yamate to die. They'll be able to be here for the second life, but that, I don't think that was the commitment there Yamate was looking for. Second life comes out. Yamate going to be slowed down additionally, but Titan are just staying very defensive here. Now, that kind of initiation, though. A two-man Ice Blast is going to be good enough to get two kills and a two-man stomp in the back. Gets one of the supports and potentially another one. The Fisher Block is going to make sure that the rest of Titan can't really pursue as easily, but they get in range of a TA trap, and now the Lich will fall as uh, four years go down. Last year left alive being the Viper, but he's already run himself back to base, and a Desolator is now up for a Templar Assassin, which means not only easier hero kills, much, much easier, but also some better pushing power from Titan as well. Yeah, and you're not just in that unfortunate position where, it, I mean, the network pretty much tells the entire story of this game. And as Ventures here, you absolutely cannot fight not under a tower. I, I, I mean, I, it's great to pop the Aegis there, but what Titan was doing there, Viper's going to eat another death. What Titan was doing there was completely transparent. And as Ventures, you just can't let yourself be baited into an engagement on those terms. Well, a uh, rather effective Vanguard slows down Viper's death for about one second total. Nice, we're able to find that pickup, and now it's going to need another tier 2 SVG move forward in defense, but pretty sure Titan are able to turn around on this uh, as soon as they want. I do kind of like this pickup, though. A medallion from the Centaur War Runner means a uh, faster Roshan, but also some additional damage for the Templar Assassin when you go in. I mean, you're kind of a blow-and-go hero anyway. Um, it does make sense to some degree to go for an item like Armlet. To be able to help out your allies. Two quick shots, and that's going to be Godlike's free already for Yamate. He now focused on the Bristleback. Not going to be able to get that kill, but he'll chase down some heroes nonetheless. Bit of a turnaround here as he's slowed down. The rest of the Titan team is not here except for the Centaur, who hits a good stun. Yamate will go down for 1,200 gold, and no, Ohio gets picked up. That was just Titan just being way too policy for their own good. Yeah, I like the medallion too, by the way, uh, a lot, and not just for offensive purposes, uh, just because of what we talked about during the draft, actually, that so much of the damage output, uh, so much of the skill-based damage output, even from Sventures, is physical damage. Uh, that six armor, even when you haven't used the medallion on Centaur, is, is just a great and extremely effective way for him to tank up in this game. He's got plenty of strength gain, as we talked about before, but as a strength hero, he doesn't necessarily have the best armor. So we have some items being picked up now. The Death Prophet is going to be starting working towards the Yules, but it's going to be a long ways away. Most of the item pickups are going to be on the side of Titan, where you have a full-up Aghanims that was gotten by uh, our Ancient Apparition. Uh, KYXY looks like he's almost going to be going for a BKB. Um, and really manning up as that Earthshaker. Net is going to be having an Aghanim. As you can see, he's going right now onto the Death Prophet. Quick and easy kill for them as they will back themselves away. Looks like the Viper wants to try and commit to the kill, but there's no way they can take KYXY, especially no as he goes uphill. Now Yamate comes in, hits the trap on three. And with the Centaur ultimate, easily going to be able to secure at least one kill. Centaur stop will stop the Bristleback. That's an additional kill for them as well. And, uh, well, at least the Lich was able to teleport out. And the Viper being invisible will be fine as well, but you can see Titan are just, uh, they've hit a, a peaking point now as all the Aghanim Scepters that are coming up for them, as well as just the pure raw damage out of this Templar Assassin, there's yeah. no way that SVG can fight this anymore. Yeah, some, somewhere, somewhere, Radiant somewhere, Wakama is smiling because this is, a, this is a Templar with uh, with that Drums Yasha build that, that he's really using in his stream to such great effect, absolutely going ham here in Radiant this game. And, you know, obviously it, it's not the highest level match. This is a pretty uneven matchup on paper. Uh, but this hero, I mean, she can just snowball in so many different ways, and you give her an advantage, even in a very high level match, uh, she's going to go ham. I mean, people... You know, because of the way that match ended, people forget what Dendi was able to do uh, on his Templar Assassin in uh, what proved to be the deciding game at TI3. But, I mean, that, that you know, up until the point where, where Alliance uh, just played brilliantly to, to finish out that game with the split push, Dendi's TA was, was just absolutely lighting that game up. The, the hero damage output that he had in that game was just staggering. I'm not entirely sure what Ohio was doing there. It felt like he was almost trying to bait out the enemy team a bit, uh, even though there was no one behind him. 
But it looks like the uh, Titan crew are now going to be going for a push in the bottom lane. Taking out that tier two. They're going to commit to a kill here on the Death Prophet with an Echo Slam. Not even necessary, actually. Uh, another right click will be able to finish him off or just the Ice Blast over the top. Will secure the kill on the Death Prophet. Rough. Down for 45 seconds means uh, maybe even with an additional kill on the Bristleback, it's going to be a very, very easy uphill battle for Titan. Net. Able to survive just barely through that Skywrath Mage ultimate. KYXY is going to be kited around rather heavily here and may fall unless he gets some sort of initiation here from the Centaur. KYXY does get right click down. At the same time, Templar Assassin is coming in from behind, already taking out one support. Going to kill the Viper as well. Chain Frost is going to bounce around a bit. But it's only going to stop them so much as Yamate now slowing the Lich, who has already been caught up on the Ice Blast. So That's going to be a complete team wipe in exchange for just one kill, and that was on the Earthshaker. Yeah, and despite the KDs, if you look at them, you know, Skyrim 3 and 10 and, and Lich 1 and 8, I actually think that the supports from Sunshirt played pretty well in this game. Uh, it was really their core that I think made some key mistakes, got out of position. And again, when you draft like that and, and give yourself a, a, a disadvantage in the laning phase against the superior team, uh, you know, game is hard, folks. But uh, not a bad match, and I understand that we still have some more coming up today. Yes, we do. We will have um, now jumping into the MSI beat it global we have to cover the um the european quarterfinals so that is what's going to be happening next we have teams such as team tinker um going to be facing up against cleave and then after that power rangers versus dream team 168 and those are two best of threes starting right after each other so that that is going to be uh, some good dota coming up um but that doesn't start for another two hours so we're going to take a bit of a break on the live stream unfortunately i can't do any in-houses or anything like that right now uh, as I have some other work to do, but uh, the stream will just be left up for two hours. It'll drop momentarily.